on this episode of New England Living. I am in love with your neighborhood. Wow, yeah, I've remarkable. never seen anything like those. So, You're the perfect kind of couple for a home like this. I have to say, this is a first for New England Living. <laughs> I heard that if you just rub their head like this, it makes it more, more humane. No, you rub his head and he goes to sleep like this. Welcome to New England Living. I'm Parker Kelly. And I am passionate about art, architecture, and design. I also love to travel, meet new people, and I'm definitely a foodie. Join me each week as I travel all over this beautiful region, showcasing the most spectacular homes and meeting the key players involved in creating them. To top it off, I'll cook up some delicious dish with a chef, and we'll finish it off with a celebration of it all. I'm Parker Kelly, and this is New England Living. New England Living TV is brought to you by Clark, Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co. Kohler Signature Store by Supply New England and Marvin Windows and Doors. And of course, please stop into the all new Seven Died in the Seaport District in Boston. Today I'm on my way to the North Shore of Massachusetts to a town called Marblehead, a rocky peninsula that extends out into Massachusetts Bay. Marblehead is a picturesque seaside town with narrow crooked streets lined with magnificent homes built centuries ago. This coastal New England town that dates all the way back to the American Revolution has a population of about 20,000 with roots in commercial fishing, whaling, and yachting. I'm on my way to meet homeowners Misty and Joe in their completely renovated 1830s Greek Revival home, located in one of Marblehead's villages known as Old Town. Joe is originally from London and was a well-known barrister before moving to the States. He's now senior VP of a Boston-based software company. Misty is from Palm Beach, Florida, and went to school for interior design. The couple, who met in LA and lived many places before coming to Boston for work, searched for two years before coming across this historic home, and it was love at first sight. They had the vision to restore it to its original grandeur, a place where they could raise their family and entertain. The home was, and continues to be, a source for creative inspiration. We're going to meet these homeowners, tour this beautifully restored home, and then Misty and Joe are turning their kitchen over to a local chef and me, and we're going to celebrate New England living in Marblehead. Look at those windows. <gasps> Cooper, hold on. Hello? Oh, oh hello! hello. <laughs> Misty! Walker, hi. Joe. Good to see you. I feel like I know you already, and I am in love with your neighborhood. <gasps> Great. Like, I love living here. And, and then everybody knows everybody. We know all of our neighbors. Everybody kind of looks out for each other. Yeah. It's a small town, but it's big enough you don't feel like it's too small. Yeah. All right, let's, um, let's start the tour. So this, we call this the McIntyre Room. There's a fairly famous architect and craftsman from Salem, which is the next town over, called Samuel McIntyre. And uh, all of the crown molding and the fireplaces and the wainscoting was recovered from a house uh, somewhere in the area and then put into this house sometime in about 1840. So it's lovely because we have all this detail from a, a local famous architect in, in both rooms and with the fireplaces. My favorite thing too about the house is that when we moved in, yes. even though it was in a bad way, it has all the original features, so nothing was ripped out or torn out. So we have all the original oh, shutters, and we have everything working. They weren't working perfectly when we moved in. Oh, lovely room, the McIntyre room. Mm -hmm. So then through here, yes, the we have the dining room. Oh, look at these doors. And we can open these doors up, obviously, if we want to. <gasps> yeah, I love these doors. A lot of people take these doors out to have more open. I love that you kept the character, the light, just the detail of it. Yeah. It's, and, and it's a different open, close. Exactly. I love that. Exactly. To close off the room if we want to. Oh, look at that painting. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's a great one to talk about that. It's not. See, what? you almost whispered that. You, are, you have the humility. It's so beautiful. Oh my heavens, that's beautiful. Look at that. That just, that just floats. Tell me about that piece. What do you call it? And, and what's the inspiration? So, so that's supposed to be a reflection on the water. Yes, I see that. So you can see the trees. Mm. And it's at sunset, and you can see the sun on the water. Yeah. And then you can see it's during springtime, so you can see all the different colors yeah. of the flowers and the trees. 
One of the things that was lovely about the house, I remember standing in the hallway with Misty and saying, you know, this hallway could be like a gallery. It yes. has this wonderful height, mm. this beautiful uh, uh, lighting. And so it's funny, as Misty has painted more and more, and there's lots of her work around the house, um, it's been great because we've had that space to hang out. Um, and all sorts of the same here, and you'll, you'll see the same in the hallway as well. Now, did I read also that several homes have your paintings? Yes. Not just your own home. Yes, there are a lot of my, my artworks and a few homes in Marblehead. Beautiful, really. Stunning. The other thing that's interesting, Parker, mm. if you noticed, but we have these incredible radiators. Oh my! Wow, they're I've remarkable. never seen anything like those. So they're just these incredible, almost sort of um, science fiction uh, radiators. They look like a slinky from yeah. the old days. Yeah. Oh wow! Oh, look at this. One of the most beautiful things about this home is just uh, almost in every room we have a fireplace. So the mantle is about the only thing that is really original, but we kept it and we noticed that they have these little, somebody at some point carved these little rabbits that are just here. Sometime in the depression, uh, the owner at that time had a little toy factory. And we think there's some connection between the toy factory and someone carving these little bunnies, uh, which are now still here. So the other lovely thing about uh, the kitchen is we have this incredible backyard with these three big slopes. Yeah, and in the, the winter, this is sledding heaven. And so we have all the kids will come over and play with our children. In fact, even Misty's probably the champion sledder. And you can come all the way down the slopes and sort of launch into the driveway. But at the end of the day, when you've had a lot of snow and sledding, you just sit here, hot chocolate, you watch the snow outside, maybe the last few sledders. It is just the perfect Sunday afternoon. And so the design of the kitchen was yours also? Yes. The reason that we did, um, we did the marble on the outside and the granite um, on the island because our kids would always have friends over. And we would do arts and crafts or we would bake cookies. Um, Anything, and we never had to worry about the yeah. staining, and it just was a lot easier to have yeah. it. It's also, we, we entertain a lot. This the, We had the feeling that this house is happiest when it's full of people. I believe that. And so part of the design of the space was how can we how can we make this a kitchen that we love to cook at as a family, but also if we have a lot of people here, we can sort of lay out on this island, people can put their glasses down, we can have a good time, we can continue to serve food through here and try and although we would try and get people through the rest of the house, inevitably people congregate here. <laughs> this room is Joe's office. Oh, this has got a masculine feel. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and these are all photos of our family, the history of our family. Oh, look at and that. You're the perfect kind of couple for a home like this. I mean, really, I feel as if we're kind of caretakers yes. of this home right. because it's a part of American mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. And I, have, I feel really blessed that we were fortunate enough to buy the home and renovate it and, and make it a wonderful place for our kids to grow up. We don't want everything to be perfect. Right. It's lived in. It's not a museum. It's, right. It's, right. it's a living museum. It That's is. Right. That's right. But it is such an amazing house. This is, oh, what a staircase. You must just feel glamorous coming up and down. Hello. Hello. Oh, this is lovely. And so this is your bedroom. Oh, another beautiful color. It is amazing how you can turn a, a, a historic space into modern and you don't have to gut and trash everything and just make it into a box. You actually can use the pieces that are here and you can actually work with some of it. It's just and the goal was to, to try and, if we were going to modernize something in the way that we did with the kitchen or for example this bathroom, was to do it in a way that we wouldn't date it too much mm -hmm. and say, oh, five years from now, yes, how do yes. we do it in such a way that well, 10, 12 years from now? We'll, we'll do that. Exactly. Yes. This is Jack's room. Oh, this is a cool room. So Jack um, was insistent, he just turned 13, was insistent that he have a Bruins room. And so you guys go to Bruins games? Yes. Often? Yes. Enough. I, I we, love the Bruins too. Do you? Yes. We do. After the tour, I had a chance to sit with the couple and talk more about the history of the home and how life had led them to it. The previous owner, um, Dorothy Miles, who was the English teacher, had a few books published and she wrote different books about um, Marblehead Homes, and this one is the revival of Marblehead Mansions. But what was lovely about this was we didn't own a copy of it, and so we had been in the home a little time, and somebody came up to us from, oh, just walked up, walked up and said, look, I own a copy of this book, you should own the book, you own the house. And so we were very, very happy. Oh, she just gave you her copy gave because her, you're yeah. in this home. Yeah. So John Hooper's family was a very wealthy merchant family here in Marblehead. Mm. 
and um, also Lydia Blackler's father, they were merchants as well, but they had come upon hard times. They lost ships during some storms. Yeah. And so Lydia's father had to borrow money from John Hooper's father. When her father passed away, John Hooper's father said, you need to go and settle the debts with Lydia. So John Hooper went to her house. He saw her, he had always been in love with her. And he said, I'm going to take care of your debt. And he ended up marrying her. And taking over all of her debt. And so Oh, that's a fairy tale right isn't there. It? It's a sweet story. Well, so she yeah. she was brought up in a very wealthy yes, family yes, but, at one time. Right. And so when he built this house, he decided he wanted to build her a house that she was accustomed to. So if you go around town and you see some of the different homes, there's a lot of homes, mm -hmm. large homes that were built by various members of the Hooper family. John and Lydia decided to build a home that would perhaps rival some of these homes, but that would allow them to, to offer the kind of parties that uh, would make them the young power couple in Marblehead. So it's a, it's a fun story. We'll have to write our chapter in the book at some point. You're part I, of it. Oh, I'm, I'm part of it. <laughs> As promised, after the home tour, Misty took me into town to some of her favorite shops. Pleasant Street, Washington Street, Atlantic Avenue, here we come. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Oh, aren't they oh. beautiful? Oh, now, what are these for? Where? So these are for the party for tomorrow night, oh. um, the Gatsby party. And she wanted to do really light, beautiful, airy flowers for somewhere we want in the house. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Oh. Thank you so much. Whoa. Oh, Missy. aren't you happy we just went in there? I can see why it's just it's like your a little bit place. of sunshine. Oh my gosh, where to next? So now I am taking you downtown, and we're going to go to Seaside Allure and look at some really cute clothes for us. Oh, this is what a so Parker, suit, yeah. I am so happy. Oh, oh, here are the owners. Hi, this is Parker Hi. Kelly. Nice to meet you. Hi. And this is Kaki and Heather, and they are the owners of Seaside Allure. Amazing. Come on in. Let's Thank take you. a look around. Love to. Oh. Look at this. I heard a lot about you guys. But I did want to point out our most popular item in the store. This is a swig <laughs> wine glass. It's great for wine, keeping your wine cold or your coffee hot. It has a removable top. It's great for the boat. And they all come with my name on them, or no? We monogrammed this <laughs> just for you. Oh, you, you. Oh, you did not. We did. You yes. did not. We, did you we know that? I did. We monogram on site, so this is our zip code. Oh, wow. And then we also monogram people's initials. And oh, we just wow. Sort of, while you wait. After shopping, Misty and I headed back to change. Her husband, Joe, some of her good friends, and her twin sister, Christy, who flew in from California, all met us at the Corinthian Yacht Club. Our chef, who also happens to be a captain, had a special treat for us. So let's talk about Misty and Joe's home. I have to say this is a first for New England living. <laughs> I heard that if you just rub their head like this, it makes it more, more humane. No, you rub his head and he goes to sleep like this. Clark, New England's official Sub-Zero and Wolf showroom and test kitchen offers three reasons to begin your project here. Explore the world's finest appliances. Then cook and taste Wolf's culinary perfection. Be inspired by innovative design. Do you crave extraordinary? Visit ClarkLiving.com to plan your visit. Imagine a place where you can design the kitchen or bath of your dreams. No need to travel from store to store to find exactly what you want. One place where you can design and shop the full line of world-class Kohler fixtures. Plus the top names in cabinetry. And hundreds of Kohler surface options. All with in-store design assistance. Visit the Kohler Signature Store today. The perfect place to create your ideal space. Seamless indoor-outdoor living spaces are currently trending. And there's no better way to achieve this than through the use of glass elements in your design. 
Expansive windows and large walls of doors lead the sights, sounds, and feelings of an outdoor environment effortlessly through your space. The key is to allow as much natural light, airflow, and visual connection with the exterior as possible. Explore your options at marvin.com. Kumar Marble and Granite offers an inventory of more than 7,000 slabs under one roof. Our selection is both exquisite and rare, sourced from countries all over the world. Seventh generation stone artist Evo Kubi leads a stellar team of artisans who take clients' wildest dreams and carve them into stone. Kumar is the go-to place for trade professionals and lovers of unique stones and complicated fabrication. Kumar has something to fit every style and price point, whether it be for inside or outside use. Book an appointment and check it out for yourself. Beautiful afternoon here with Chris Sweeney of Coastline Construction, and we are outside of Misty's beautiful home. So let's talk about Misty and Joe's home. We walked through with the Wikes family uh, pretty much uh, early spring of 2010, and the former residents had taken it and chopped it up into five separate units. Five different Fully equipped with full kitchenettes, their own bathrooms. It was completely uh, a shambles. Now, did you believe it could be amazing? I mean, we did. As soon as we walked in, you could feel the energy and the bones of this building. It was just a very dramatic feeling when you walked in. 14 foot high ceilings, you know, grand entryway, uh, all of the huge windows. Uh, so we knew it had the bones. To come back to what Joe and Missy really wanted to bring it to. And what a space to entertain. <laughs> Amazing space. I mean the flow of this building, the the grand foyer, the stairway that goes up, it's just it it just calls for entertainment. Well Chris, it's so nice to chat with you about the project. Thank you so up. much. <laughs> How do you want to live? As a decent person? A fine human being? A good friend? Is that it? Good? Of course not. Parent of the year? Better. Making her heart skip a beat. Thump. One of a kind. Undeniable. Like a boss. Like a standard bearer. Like a pro. We couldn't agree more. We are professional grade. GMC. Pursuit, built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in pursuit. Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. The next morning, Misty and I decided to head to Crocker Park to meet up with her friend and yoga instructor, Elle Hayes. What better way to prepare for the busy day and night ahead of us than fresh air and yoga while wearing the colorful Misty Bees, the brand Misty created that showcases the vibrancy of her artwork. After yoga, the girls and I stopped into Eat Well Kitchen for a round of smoothies. After yoga, Misty and I headed back to the house to get ready for the dinner party. But this was no ordinary dinner party. Misty and Joe decided to throw a party befitting the grandeur and period of their home. A great Gatsby party, where everyone, including me, got gussied up for the occasion. 
As guests arrived, Chef Craig and I dashed out to get some fresh lobster. Like Misty and Joe, Chef Craig is all about making the most out of life. He runs his business, Nor'easter Expeditions, entertaining. When he asked me to join him, it didn't surprise me that he had a vintage car with a chauffeur waiting. We definitely made a few heads turn in Marblehead. The folks at Little Harbor Lobster Company helped us get the freshest, I mean the freshest, seafood possible. How's that? Beautiful. Is that too much? No, that's good. That's beautiful. More than no, merrier. No, not too much in that day and age. Extravagance. No, too much. Innovation, technology, design. It is why the Seaport District is the fastest growing area in Boston. It's also the reason we selected the Innovation District as the home of Seven Tide. If you're looking for a one-of-a-kind experience filled with design inspiration, a place where you can explore, see your ideas come to life, this is the place. Think of Seven Tide as a design adventure for your home, featuring the most trusted top-tier brands in their industries. For homeowners and designers alike, it's a unique approach to home design. You can visit Clark's newest Sub-Zero and Wolf showroom and test kitchen, giving you hands-on access to the world's finest appliances, or take in the country's first experience center for Marvin windows and doors. Our goal is to provide inspiration in an exceptional space that offers a relaxed and very personal experience. If you like what you see, we'll refer you to an authorized dealer. But while you're at Seven Tide, there's no pressure. Even the parking is complimentary. We want to cultivate an atmosphere that's free from anxiety so you can focus on what's right for the design of your home. New England has some of the finest designers in the country, and here you'll see an exciting array of their work in full-scale kitchens. You'll be able to see, touch, and even taste your kitchen design. Both inside and out, Seven Tide offers the perfect setting to bring your ideas to life. We want you to rethink what's possible. Adjacent to Clark, you'll find Marvin windows and doors. They offer a high-tech, high-touch experience that invites you to reset your expectations for what a home can be. After visiting Marvin, you'll never think about windows and doors the same way again. Whether you're a homeowner or a designer, building a new custom home or remodeling, we invite you to come experience the possibilities. Come be inspired, be informed, and ultimately be at home at Seven Tide. For more information for your home inspiration, visit SevenTide.com. Yours by design. Back at the house, the party was in full swing. Guests poured in and it was clear that they were feeling the Great Gatsby vibe. Uh, hello. <laughs> I have to say this is a first for New England living. <laughs> I hope. Welcome to 1920. 28. So tell us what we're going to do. All right, so tonight we've, we're doing actually the Titanic dinner party uh, for the last meal on the Titanic. Oh. Um, we're going to take excerpts of that. It's actually 12 courses, okay. but we kind of condensed it down to a bite sized plates. Let's start off with, uh, let's do a pan seared halibut to start off with. So we're just going to put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on there. All right. Salt, pepper, take a salt. salt pepper. But come up from up a little bit higher spot. So oh, kind of just it. Yeah, you got it. So we're gonna take this beautiful pea puree. We also have on the side that I actually forgot to tell you that I uh, sauteed up with some really great fresh peas that I just found this morning at the market. I'm just gonna oh. kind of put them in there so you can have that as well. A little texture. Just a little texture Add on it. a little it. drama. Love that. Perfect. Oh, that's looking good. Oh, that smells delicious. Doesn't that smell good? Oh. That's Ooh, fresh too. That now it's starting good. to really smell like now something, it is. isn't it? That yeah. looks good. What we're gonna garnish this with is Oh. Pea tendrils. Mm, love them. So these, if you ever had them, they taste just... I love to actually saute them and have them with my eggs. They're I actually so really good. love them. So you can just chop those up just a little bit. And then let's take one of those lemons back there and cut that in half too. Because that's going to be our, our, uh, our kind of I, I squeeze this. on this the top. Is just, this is bright and beautiful. As you know, it's, it's all fresh yeah. foods. It's yeah. all it is. There's nothing. There's no hocus pocus here. And then we're going to take a piece of this, maybe two pieces, because this just looks so oh good. Oh my gosh, look at that. And we're going to slide it in there. That is just so fresh, we, so green. Does this go on the top? That's there? going right on top. Look at that. So a little squeeze of that lemon <laughs> on the top. Right. Oh my and gosh. And that's, that's, your, that's your dish. Mm. Oh, fresh halibut. Oh my god. Mm. It's mm. nice. Mm. Second course we're going to do out of yeah. the 12 is another is an appetizer. So this is just little tiny baby potatoes with the skin still on them. Okay. Yes. I boil the potatoes in 30 seconds. It's done, all right? After we, we boil the potatoes, we let them cool for a minute. Shut them, cut them down, and then we take a, 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 a scooper and yep. just scoop them all out and put it in the bowl. 
and then I just re put, put them into a piping bag. You can use a Ziploc bag or whatever you want to do. Just yeah, pipe them back the in. Corner. Yep, cut the corner and put it in. So I made that part simple for you. All right. Now the hard Thank part you. here is because I have this big bowl of caviar. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, it's a boat. <laughs> oh, look at it. It's a mini Titanic. It's the mini Titanic <laughs> no, of <terrible>. caviar. <laughs> so the caviar has got to go yeah. on top of these right. things, nice and dolloped on each one. Okay. Just put a nice dollop because we want people to actually enjoy that. How's that? Beautiful. That's too much? Yeah. That's good? That's beautiful. More the merrier. No, no, too much in that day and age. Extravagant. No, too much. Is that good? So there is our bucket of caviar. Okay. But the creme de la creme, you need to put a little, okay. little onion on there. So these are chives. So You're that's awesome. it. That All one's right, done that's again. It. Number two. Oui, done. Daddy. Gone. We can send this out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what you want to name them. Um, I don't want to name them before we even take them. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, I'm kind sure. of, kind of tradition. It, I mean, is it? So <laughs> you put me the, on the, the first thing we have to do here. Now, put obviously, them we have to put them asleep. So no, you, no. she's going to try her version of putting them asleep. Yes. I, I heard that if you just rub their head like this, it makes it more, more humane. No, you rub his head and he goes to sleep like this. Wow. You are a lobster you... whisperer. <laughs> I'm impressed. I've never you, seen that. You've never, really never have? ever seen Did that. Did I teach you something? You Jeff? have taught me something. We're just going to put some EVO or the vir extra virgin olive oil on there. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add those three containers right into here and we're going to saute these up real quick. Right. So let's add that next one in. There we go. There we go. Out of there, right? Already? Yep, you got it. We're going to add a couple other things just to make it really even better because we have a stuffing. So one is going to be good old fashioned. Everybody panko. uses, yeah, everybody else uses breadcrumbs. I'm sorry, I like the likeness of panko. So there's some panko crumbs. Let's add that in here. Whatever you feel comfortable with, let's just play with it. See how it kind of yeah, bolts yeah. together. We want it to be a little bready because we want it to feel like a stuffing. Yeah. So I mean, so there's more probably two more handfuls. Yeah, there. I would say. Try it one more time. So you can see how this is kind of kind of starts to clump together. Oh, that looks so and we're just going to. Fill up that. Oh, I love the smell of stuffing. Mm. Cavity there. Oh, that looks good. Mm. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go bring these out to the grill. All right, so this is the feast. The last part piece. of the feast. <laughs> the, the lobster's done. Yes. We also did a portobello. We did a, uh, this is a skirt steak. It's got a, a, a Diablo sauce on it. Yes. This is a lamb lollipop, which you can't beat lamb lollipops. And yes. of course, what dinner does not go down with a Waldorf salad? That so a that's a typical Waldorf salad, okay? So you should try the lobster. I'm though. going to, and this every one of this is going to be uh, a recipe it's, is going to be on our website. Yeah. All right, here we go. Mm. So you made that, mm. not me. Mm. So it's now oh, you did all the Chef Parker. <laughs> <laughs> An incredible historic home, loving, fun, gracious homeowners, fantastic chef. <laughs> this, that's New England Living in Marblehead. Until next week, I'm Parker Kelly. Des yeux qui font de ce le mien Un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche Voilà le porte sans me touche De 